we are back again. Fight Evil Podcast all up in this bitch. We've got Chucky here and we've got Jiggy too. It is indeed your boy Chicha Jiggy. Yeah. Now this time we're talking about a movie called Live. L-I-V-E apostrophe. I think tag me as an explanation, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> That's what you get when you have less than five hours sleep and you try and do a podcast. But yeah, I believe in you. <laughs> Apostrophe. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a dumbass. Um, okay. Following that uh, sensational performance, I was going to try and ramble through an explanation of what this movie is about, but I think. Given the circumstances, maybe it's just best I read the plot on IMDb because it's um, fairly succinct and kind of sums up exactly what this movie's about. And so it's a mockumentary following an ambitious TV network executive trying to produce a controversial reality show where contestants play Russian roulette. I bought heaps of uh, Blu-rays recently of uh, movies kind of from this time period, this mid to late 2000s. And they all tend to be this uh, kind of lower budget type stuff. Now, this one in particular, though, has quite a few recognizable names. Obviously, the big one is Ava Mendez. But then there's a few other people in here who, as they pop up, I'm like, hey, I know that guy or I know that woman. And so maybe I'll just quickly run through the list here. Of course, I already said Ava Mendez. The few other ones that kind of pop up um, quite immediately. Uh, Jay Hernandez. I remember him from Hostel. Andre Brower. I've seen him in a number of things. Is that the guy from Brooklyn Nine Nine? I- I've not seen uh, that. So I, I, th- I think that. it is. But I've seen him in a bunch of other things. I just don't recall titles. Uh, Missy Pyle, who I remember as the, the weird, I don't know what you want to call it, the weird foreign chick from Dodgeball, the one with the big ass eyebrows. So, you know, the, there's a handful of people here, I'm not going to go through everyone, but there's a handful of people here that you'll probably recognize and you've seen before. So, surprisingly, the cast is, um, kind of deep. Now, in terms of the actual movie itself, actually had a decent time with it. I thought it was actually an alright movie. Before I go deeper into it, though, how about you? What what were your initial thoughts? Have you seen it before? I hadn't seen it before. This is my first time. Well, not only had I not seen it before, I just think I've probably heard of it before, which may be that surprising. It doesn't seem to be a particularly well-known movie. I mean, I see it has over uh, 5,000 votes on IMDb, but 5,000 is it really that much in the scheme of things, or that many in the scheme of things. The, the main reason I was sort of drawn to this one and why I sort of took an interest in watching it, one, I thought the plot sounded like it had potential, and two, when you were going through names, I, I found it funny. I, 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 I have no idea who Eva Mandis is. I, I don't know the woman. <laughs> I, I don't recognize her from anything. But the the one reason I actually went out of my way to watch this was because of David Kramholtz, who was sort of like one of the camel guys in the movie, who's sort of... He doesn't really get much in the way of character, but I don't think any of these people get much in the way of character. But he's just a very familiar face to me. I He was one of the stars in a, sh- a show called Nambos. It was sort of like a, a cop drama type thing uh, that went on for five seasons. So I'd seen every episode of that growing up. So that's pretty much why I was attracted to this one. And I thought it was a decent movie. It seems... It's, it's sort of difficult for me to explain. I think it was a well-made movie. Suddenly, toward the end, I thought it was a somewhat tense movie. The whole idea is sort of radical. The idea being, like Chucky said, there's an idea to have a sort of reality TV show in which there's some contestants playing Russian roulette. It's, it's a bit flashier than that, but that's pretty much what they're doing. So there's going to be someone shooting themselves on it. I have to admit, this one thing that sort of confused me. Like, if the f- very first person who had gotten the gun had gotten the real bullet, wouldn't the show, like, be over in, like, five minutes? Well, that, that, that's a funny thing. As I'm, as I'm watching this, I'm thinking of all the possible outcomes 
this is a movie that actually got me thinking quite a lot. Um, so there is that scenario. Okay, what happens if first person bites the dust? Then, okay, it's a five-minute show. But also, on the other hand, what happens if the first five people survive? <laughs> then what happens, like, the last one <laughs> just has to willingly blow their brains out? Yeah, that's, an, that's another good question. <laughs> <laughs> they, they could just simply say, um, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to pull that trigger. <laughs> I, I assume there's no legal thing saying they have to do that. So, you know, that, that that's another thing that would have been interesting. And then perhaps, like, you know how they put all the dummy bullets in with the real bullet? What if they just told people there was a real bullet, but they were all dummy bullets, and it was just a show that made every single person sweat? <laughs> well, yeah, I was actually thinking that exact same thing, too. Like, plot twist, no one's actually going to die because this, uh, the studio is not that idiotic to put that show out. But I mean, you'd still get your huge ratings. Obviously, you know, if you did that, it would just be a one, one-off show, and, you'd, you know, no one would probably tune in next time knowing that's what's going to happen cuz I, I think i think one of the things that happened in this one you know we see how big the show got more than 50% of the people in america is watching it and now it's something that happens like the, the they have subsequent shows and i don't know I, it it's hard enough to buy that they put the show on tv in the first place but to have the show go on <laughs> Um, with new contestants and, and such, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty wild. Yeah, and I, I do think that's one part with a movie. I don't want to say shine because I might be a bit strong. I think it gives you an interesting glimpse. Like I, I don't really think about TV through the eyes of the people who I guess make the programs. Like they're talking about market share and stuff. The things I don't care absolutely about whatsoever. And well, that's, I think it's one of the issues. I thought the main character, or I guess we should also say this, and I think Chucky probably did say, this movie sort of shot as like a, a full documentary, and it's even like in, in memoriam at the end for a character who died. It just, so it, it's made to look like a sort of a documentary of this ambitious executive trying to pick this uh, controversial TV show out. But I, I think one of the issues with the movie, though, is that the main character, for like 95% of the movie, was so utterly unlikable. <laughs> and there's like sort of like the stereotypical alpha businesswoman type thing. So I'm not sure what they could have done. I mean, that's pro- probably the whole point of the movie. She does get some human moments toward the end of the movie when she realizes what she's actually doing. But I, I just feel like for most of the movie, she she she's just pretty much ruthlessly going after the goal of getting this TV show on just to. Well, I mean, she has this whole spiel about she doesn't want to be forgotten, and she wants more than three pagos in an obituary. Like, boy, you can't. <laughs> she's already living better than most Americans are living, so I don't see what the hell she has to complain about. But it, it's uh, just that she's just not a very likable character. And as I sort of alluded to earlier, despite the fact I really like David Kramholtz, he doesn't have much character, and really no one does because the focus is on this woman and the attempts to get this TV show on. And it's really interesting. And I, I do think that's where the movie does well. It, it makes you think about some of the stuff. I mean, obviously the idea that a show like this would be greenlit and actually aired. Like, I could theoretically see a show like this being recorded about Navo Avo actually make air. And that's on, on some, like, premium station or something. And even then, I could imagine it happening. But, you know, in a slightly different future, it's not entirely out of the question, in my opinion. Hmm. I mean, it, and I think it's where the um, interest mainly comes in. It's it's not like it's some sci-fi setup. I mean, it's it's theoretically possible. So it's certainly interesting in the aspect. And I do think the whole legal argument, they have arguments with the lawyer in this movie, and he eventually decides, say, hey, I want to be famous, so I'll just go, go for it. I think there's also some more interesting scenes, too. Yeah. The movie did have... Um, I think it dragged a little bit in the middle. It's kind of like, um, it's almost like watching the reality show yourself, which, which you do get to see in the last 20 plus minutes of the movie. So, so it starts off pretty interesting. You know, they're trying to come up with these ideas and it's, it's fairly quick that 
this idea just gets blurted out, hey, let's just, you know, can't do Russian roulette or whatever, and then, you know, she pauses and it's like, oh, that's a great idea. So, so you know, the the beginning of the movie is pretty intriguing, trying to just see, <laughs> okay, they, they can't make this work and see how they're going to somehow make this work. Uh, but then it gets to this middle part where, okay, we know they're going for it, so they they start showcasing the different contestants and things like that, and it almost starts to feel like the, a reality show itself, where you know the the good stuff is at the end. You feel like you're in that spot where it's like, we'll be back after these commercials or something, something like that. You you, you just want to get to the the money shot, I guess. You know, you want to you you want to see which one's going to bite the dust or, or what's going to happen. Yeah, and I will say, I think they did a good job. I think, God, I, I watched this movie just early today. There were, was it five or six contestants? Six. Six, yeah. I think they did a good job about, of picking a variety of interesting people there to sort of represent different walks of life, naturally. I mean, I, I don't I don't know how it's for most people who watch this. I thought Rick, who was like this farmer who was going to lose his land, I think he's from Minnesota or Wisconsin or something. He had sort of an emotional backstory. And in fact, I think it was his uh, interview tape that allowed the, um, <laughs> it's one of the funniest scenes. In fact, probably one of the few funniest scenes in the movie. Uh, she, uh, she showed that uh, interview to a bunch of people who were supposed to buy some ad time because uh, without ad time, you can't really get a show going in this country. Mm. And uh, after the interview, like half the people were crying. <laughs> and uh, this one moment, like, oh, he's an actor, right? He's like, no. <laughs> and it just <laughs> breaks down sobbing. It just sort of cracked me up. So That's a sappiest story. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what? It was effective, though. And it, yeah. it's actually situations like that. Like, hey, I want to give my son the farm that was in my grandfather's father's hands for all these centuries it's stories like that that could actually could lead people into a situation like hey you know it's worth the risk I, I could do it and I actually thought it was going to be him who well I guess you could say bit the bullet but he may or may not have been so that's nice well yeah see that's another thing like I was saying earlier the movie gets you thinking and thinking about what might happen and and I was thinking what if this guy is the one that bites a bullet because He's got the sappiest story, and the thing is, whoever dies is the one that, like, their family gets nothing. So, in this particular instance, you know, his backstory is basically he's got a sick kid, heaps of medical bills, almost has to lose this farm, which, what was it, his father or something, or his great, or his grandfather or whatever that he in- inherited from, um... And he's about to lose it, you know that type of thing. So if he dies, his wife is in a much worse position than they are in now. <laughs> so, so not only does she still have all the debt and, and whatever else, now she doesn't have him to kind of help keep things going. I do think one caveat, though, I, th- there's a scene earlier where they're sort of interviewing a bunch of people, like, "Hey, who who are you rooting for?" and such. And stuff like that. And I think one person said, hey, I'm, I'm rooting for Rick. Even I'd donate to him. I honestly think in a situation like that, after seeing Rick's tape, they would find that, I mean, the wife was there. They know who the wife is. So they would be able to find her identity. And well, now, I mean, this is back in 2000, what, 2007, 2009, something like that. So they didn't have necessarily a GoFundMe or things like that. But I have to imagine she'd be getting a ton of donations given how many people were watching that show. So she would probably come out okay. But it's still not worth it. <laughs> I also like how, uh, as as uh, they're trying to justify the show, when Ava Mendes' character brings up like Steve Jobs and Buzz Aldrin, and, and how these guys kind of like revolutionized the world by you know taking these big chances or whatever. I think you know. Creating computers and walking on the moon is a little bit different to organizing a show where someone blows their brains out. So it's not quite the same thing. But I guess to each their own. (laughs) Another thing, and I have to ask this because I tend to ask this anytime there's like kind of someone behind the camera as we're watching. I know it's a mockumentary. But does it count as a found footage movie? 
No, I would personally say as pure um pure definition goes no, mainly because well, this is going to sound stupid. It's for the trust it found. It seems like it, it's like it's supposed to be a quote unquote real documentary. I, I just think most fun footage movies would have like a in memoriam thing at the end with one of the characters. So it feels more like to be fair, it's not particularly well documented as that. It's like, like one thing I have to say with movies sort of jumps right into it. There's like no time at the beginning to give us anything. We sort of one of the very first scenes. Hey, this is what's going on, and we follow it from there. But just sort of like the style of the movie, I don't personally think it counts as fun footage. But I would say that if you happen to enjoy the occasional fun footage movie, this probably wouldn't do too poorly for you. Hmm. Have you ever seen any other? Russian roulette movies, there's only two that come to mind, and, and one is a remake of the other. <laughs> uh, so there's, um, well, I'll, I'll just mention the two that I'm thinking of. There's a movie called 13, it's Meti, which I believe is a French movie. And then there's a remake, the the US remake of that 13, which is actually also a pretty decent movie. Th- those are the two that come to mind. Uh, anything else? Yeah, I was going to say, <clears throat> so I'm dying of it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm going to say I don't believe so. Certainly, Russian roulette's probably been an element in some of the movies I've watched, but having that be like one of the um the main focus of the movie, I don't believe I've seen anything that quite fits the description. Mm. Well, I'm not surprised somebody like the French would do a movie like that. Okay, so you haven't seen those movies? I have not. Okay, well. I remember enjoying them. It's one of those things where it's just it's just rather suspenseful because you know, it, okay, when they pull this trigger, is their head gonna blow off or not? So, as we were discussing earlier, being that this is network TV and they're always you know kind of uh, spitballing ideas for shows, we did see them pitch it, or some people in the movie pitch other shows. So. There was one guy who pitched a, a sperm race. <laughs> what did you think about that one? <laughs> Would you tune in? So, just to give some small background, I've, and I've mentioned this before, I'm not really big into watching TV, but one show I do watch, and it happens to be a reality TV show, I do watch Survivor. Uh, no spoilers, please. I'm only at season like 18 out of 46, so <laughs> I, I know. But I, I do enjoy Survivor. And... That's a reality show that has its problems. But I don't think its problems anyway come close to the rea- the problems that, that that show that Chucky was just talking about. That that show has um I mean it, it it's reminds me a bit of those oh I don't know if you use Peacock or Hulu, but you occasionally you occasionally see shows like that like Love Beach or like Malibu Party. It's just it's really like I guess it's not. I guess some of them are game show reality game shows. Some of them may just be more like Big Brother stuff, which I guess is still a game show. I've never actually seen Big Brother, so I'm not quite sure how it's organized. So it might be a game. My point being that what he was describing sounds like the exact type of thing I would not want to watch. So just I'm not the demographic apparently. Well, if if you really think about it, Survivor really is a sperm race, isn't it? Well, I'm just going to say yes for the um, sake of discussion. I, I, I will tell you, though, the, the boob job TV idea, I might be in for that if we get to see some titties. Yeah, and, and that reminds me, actually, like, they're all about, like, trying to push the envelope. Like, they, they referenced, uh, I think it was a Russian TV show earlier. Like, the idea is, hey, they gave this guy a cow, and if, if he can, like, get away from the police for, like, 35, 45 minutes without being caught. He gets to keep the car. Well, that just seems... Um, maybe I missed something. Maybe they weren't actually police. Maybe they're just other people chasing them. But no matter what, it seems like reckless endangerment just for the sake of a new car. And it just... Like, that type of extreme reality stuff, it, it, it just doesn't seem like the type of thing that we really need to be pushing through. Like, I get... It actually sort of reminds me of... I'm not sure if you remember, um, what was it, Scale Campaign? I was an Australian movie we talked about some time ago. And the whole idea was, oh, we have to have like a, a scale tactics only more extreme. And well, we saw how that went. So I, I, I don't really think pushing the envelope in that form 
it might work for a little bit, but I don't think it ever lasts particularly long. At some point in this movie, it sounded like that uh, that guy that does the voice and all the trailers was in it for a little bit. You you know how movies in the eighties and nineties or you know around that time, most of the trailers would be narrated by one particular guy. Did it sound like that guy was in this movie for a little bit? I'm not sure which character or which scene you're talking about. Not a particular character. Like, he did some narration for... I, I don't know if it was um, the premise for the show. or It was somewhere in the middle of the movie. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't be surprised if they... Probably probably obviously not the same individual, but I wouldn't be surprised if they got, like, a sound alike because it's such a, um, I don't know, recognizable... I'm a sort of generic <laughs> type of voice. I gotta, I gotta say, I, I, I kind of miss that, like those eighties, nineties trailers, and and cause, cause I think of all the modern trailers, and it's like all the modern trailers just now all feel the same. I want to go back or, or do trailers differently now. It's it's just like every trailer I see is just the same thing. They they're kind of just all edited the same way. They have like. A lot of them these days, they put in, they'll take like a popular song from 30 years ago and they'll kind of repurpose it. Like they'll take some rock song and then turn it into this completely different genre. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, but I'm sure people will know what I'm talking about. Well, I, I, I can say this much as someone who's seen a decent amount of Salvage and 80s trailers. I certainly think they were a bit more engrossing than uh, modern day. At least, I don't like to paint the whole modern day trailers as being bad, but I think a lot of modern day trailers aren't particularly great, at least in my opinion. Probably for much the same reasons a lot of people think, so they just give way too much away and they don't keep enough held back. It's sort of disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, so live was surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be. It certainly had me on the edge of my seat at times. Like I said, it is it is a significant portion of the movie. It's it, it it's almost like the sa- the same feeling you have when you do watch like a, a TV show that you you're really into, like a reality show that you're really into, where you just you just really want to get to the good bit, but they they keep making you sit there and uh, delaying and keeping you in suspense and so that, that that's kind of what the movie was to me I, I i wouldn't say it was a great movie but and it's certainly not something i'm going to watch many times over but i think it's a movie that i would recommend people at least watch once and and, and see what they have to say or think about it not bad yeah i would say i was sort of surprised i wasn't necessarily sure if i was expecting to like it or not I, to be honest, I sort of just threw it down and wow, what happened, happened. Which is probably the way you should go into movies. But I found it at times quite, uh, quite suspenseful. I thought they did a good job picking the uh, six contestants, uh, giving them different character traits. Like, one's like a performance artist. I mean, who gives a fuck if she dies? Am, am I right? <laughs> she did have that, uh, surprising move that she pulls on the show. They really didn't think that one through very well, did they? <laughs> yeah. I, and she, she has just a more blasé attitude. I mean, if you know performance art, you probably get the idea. But I thought they did a good job picking a nice bunch of random contestants. One guy's like a young guy who wants to live life to the fullest. I can appreciate that, even though I do the exact opposite. But <laughs> point being, I sort of appreciate the variety they had. I think toward the end, things did get pretty tense. I'm not wild about the actual ending, but it, it's fine. I don't know if the movie is a movie I'd ever want to watch again, mainly because, well, I don't think it was particularly boring at any point. I just don't know if there's any more to be gained from it. Like, I, I had an okay time with it, but I just want to say I was really taken by it. It was decent, but it's, it's not something I'd probably watch again. At least any time within the next 10, 15 years. Well, we'll say that, that that's a good point. And I've brought that up in some other movies that we've discussed where cer- certain movies have, especially the ones that kind of rely mainly on suspense and mystery 
you know, they're, they're great when you first watch them, but then you kind of have to forget pretty much everything that happens before you watch it again. Otherwise, you know, all the stuff that made it such an enjoyable watch the first time, like I said, the suspense, the mystery, what's going to happen. If you know what's going to happen, half of your enjoyment's already gone. Uh, I know one particular movie where I mentioned this was uh, the movie called, what's it called? Uh, yeah, it was Searching with John Cho, the MILF guy from American Pie. <laughs> That's all he's ever going to be known for. But... <laughs> um, we, we discussed that one many years ago when it came out, and I think you had a bit of a different opinion on it, but basically my thoughts was it was a good movie. It's because it had, it had me on the edge of my seat pretty much the whole time. But now that I know what happens, if I was to watch this movie again months or a couple years later, however long, I'm no longer on the edge of my seat. So it's it, I'm, I'm not going to have anywhere near as good of an experience watching it again unless I wait so long until I've forgotten everything. I, I, I would say this is, there can also be a sort, sort of a different take too. No, I don't think it applies here. But there are some movies, like I saw this movie... I don't know, maybe six, seven months ago, called Knives Out, which is, I think it's 2017 or something. Some big names in it. It's a mystery movie, and certainly if you've seen the movie and you know how it ends, well, you, you may not be in this part of the movie because you know how it's going, but you can actually go back and watch a movie and see the little pieces that fit together. So some movies, you even if you know how it ends, you can still get something out of it watching the game by fitting the pieces together as they happen for a slightly different experience, but like I said, I don't think it's the case in this movie. But there are some movies where there is some value in that. Yeah. Well, I guess if the, if you're watching this movie live, if you're watching it, and uh, if you're finding that it's not doing much for you, at least you got Ava Mendes to look at throughout the whole movie. Yeah, and actually speaking of which, where do you, you or where do you most people know Eva Mendes from? She's in heaps of movies, a um, bunch of big ones, a uh, bunch of small ones. I, I didn't actually realize that she hadn't been in anything for the past 10 years. At least that's what IMDb says. But yeah, she she was huge. She was in heaps of stuff back then. You know, I could go to the theater and every now and then she'll be in one of those movies in a, in a fairly prominent role. Um, she's generally regarded as you know, a beautiful woman, so, you know, <laughs> a lot of guys see her as eye candy too. Yeah, here's two really funny things. So I just looked it up on Wikipedia. It says that her acting career began in the late 80s with Children of the Corn 5 and Urban Legends Final Cut, which is the second Urban Legends movie, both of which are movies I've seen. <laughs> so either it just is it clicking with me. I said she that apparently she's um, either married to or at least partners with Ryan Gosling, so that's interesting. So, he's a, she's a lucky woman. Yeah. She was in The Place Beyond the Pines, which we watched and discussed a while back with Ryan Gosling. <laughs> yeah, to, to be fair, he's probably the only name I actually remember from the movie. But, I mean, I, yeah, I, I guess I'll just say that I, I didn't have any problem with her performance, of course. It's just that her character is generally hideous. But I, that's really, that is the point, to be fair. The only thing that I can really say negatively about her performance in this movie was that she took that strawberry and she ate half of it and then threw it back into the bowl. What the fuck is she doing? <laughs> Who does that? Well, she was done. You know, she was done with what she wanted. So hey, sort of wasted. Let the next person have some. The shitty excuse, but yeah. And then they and then they had um like this big ass apple. Shortly after, like, what's the deal with this movie and its big ass fruit? Because that strawberry was pretty big too. Hey, but that was a nice crunchy apple, so some good stuff. <laughs> 